What once was known as the golden age of television, headlined by shows like The Wire, The Sopranos, and Mad Men, is now just the golden age of content, with streaming services leading the way. Among today's most popular and acclaimed shows is the Netflix series The Crown, which tracks the life and long reign of Queen Elizabeth. 34-year-old British actor Claire Foy exploded onto Hollywood's A-list and onto the awards circuit with a captivating performance as the young queen in The Crown's first two seasons. Foy's latest character is an icon herself, but she couldn't possibly be any more different from the queen. Claire and I got together here in New York this week for a Sunday sit-down. Fans who fell in love with Claire Foy on The Crown are in for a bit of a shock with the new film, The Girl in the Spider's Web. The girl who hurts men who hurt women. Foy is almost unrecognizable as Lizbeth Salander, the fearsome hacker and central character in author Stieg Larsson's best-selling Millennium Trilogy. Take your child and leave. He won't hurt you again. Is there an added responsibility as an actor for you to say, I've got to get this right for all those people who have a vision of what this character looks like and acts like? I think you can't do that. You, you can't get it right. I think you have to give yourself the freedom to explore and understand and be surprised by yourself and the character. I loved her so much as a fan of the novels anyway. So I sort of felt she was in safe hands. I felt like I would be harder on myself than anyone else could be. Claire was involved in every detail of her transformation into the famous female protagonist, from that dragon tattoo to the piercings and even the accent. I'm transferring all of your cash to your wife. I think your dialect coach said we were going for light Swedish. <laughs> light Swedish. <laughs> How did you learn the Swedish accent? What did you want to focus in on? Well, that was another thing that I said when I took the role. I said, I'm only going to do it if I can do a Swedish accent. And I think everyone was a bit like, do you have to? <laughs> While Foy was filming the movie in Sweden last winter, the Me Too movement in Hollywood was at its peak. Did you view it as serendipitous or gratifying in some way to have this kind of character who's taking on male predators at a time like this be elevated to the screen? It was more about the fact that you, I suddenly was aware that women who've experienced what Lisbeth has experienced in her life, there were suddenly conversations happening that Lisbeth had never been allowed to have, mm. that that character had never had that openness and that support and that um, kind of uh, respect, I suppose. Growing up in the UK, Foy didn't find acting until her early 20s. But as the youngest of three siblings, she showed a natural penchant for the spotlight. Were you the performer of the family? Uh, I was the most annoying member <laughs> of the family. I don't, think, I don't know whether I was a performer. I was des absolutely desperate for attention, absolutely desperate. Viewers and critics often remark on Foy's expressive eyes, which can hold a scene with almost no dialogue. But in high school, one of those famous eyes was threatened by a tumor discovered in Claire's eye socket. It turned out to be benign, but the experience of surgery and treatment was life-changing. What do you remember about that time? Oh, God. Whenever you're um, ill in any significant way, um, your world goes from oh, to, oh. and so I'd finished school and it was supposed to be, here I come, into the world, off we go. Right. Um, but I sort of didn't have that experience. I said I had to kind of have an operation and take lots of medication and take a year out and, and just rest and get better and things like that. So How old were you at that point? 18. 18. Yeah. And so I think it just gives you, an, you know, um, any, whenever you, you just realise what's important in life, you realise very, very quickly. Foy took a year off in between high school and college, in part to recuperate. Part of your gap year was here in New York. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you stayed at a youth hostel up I in did. Harlem. I did. What brought on that decision? I'd always wanted to come to New York, and it, it sort of was quite an important moment in my life where it was the first time that after being so ill and then getting on a plane on my own and suddenly being like, I'm, doing, I'm actually doing something. <laughs> I'm doing something, and I hadn't done anything for such a long time. Right. Um, so it was, it was quite amazing. And a man shouted at me as soon as I got oh, out of cab. Perfect. It was great. What did he say? Like, Do you remember? It, I, swear words and, and all sorts <laughs> of kind of... Um, but I was like, oh, it's New York. I'm in New York. <laughs> this is what it's like. After her brush with the Big Apple, Claire went on to college and studied acting at the Oxford School of Drama. 
Her breakout role in the UK was in a 2008 miniseries adaptation of Charles Dickens' Little Dorrit. I know I am small, but I am quite grown up. But most of us came to know Foy as a young version of Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth in the Netflix hit The Crown. Yes, I am queen, but I am also a woman. You auditioned when you were pregnant? Mm-hmm. What was that process like? Slightly ludicrous. <laughs> <laughs> and I sort of found myself five months pregnant uh, in a crown with a wig on, <laughs> sort of trying to <laughs> do scenes with imaginary Winston Churchill. And then they asked me to do it. It would have loved to have said it was one of those moments where you go, woohoo! But actually, I was like, really? OK. The only person I have ever loved is you. And can you honestly look me in the eye and say the same? Foy's performance earned her a Golden Globe for the first season and an Emmy for the second. Have there been moments of pressure or anxiety where you feel like this is all moving very quickly? Yeah, I mean, at the, the, the Globes that year, there was definitely a moment where I was quite afterwards where I needed to stop all the noise and just go on my own and just kind of remember who I was and why I was here and what on earth was happening, because it, it was quite overwhelming. So you actually did that? You sort of stepped away and said, I need to regroup for a moment? This train's going well, awfully fast. Well, me and fast. my agent and, and, um, <laughs> and one of my publicists went and had, you know, uh, a drink <laughs> and, <laughs> and a sit down and I kind of like, listen, this is going to be OK. And then we like, we were, it was, because for everyone, we were all a bit like, oh, oh, oh. That break was brief as Foy was in demand. She signed on to play Neil Armstrong's wife, Janet, in the biopic, First Man. But you're a bunch of boys making models out of balsa wood. Although fans of The Crown lobbied for Foy to return as Queen Elizabeth, a new cast will tackle the monarch's later years next season. <laughs> what do you make of giving up The Crown, so to speak? I don't really feel like I've given it up. I feel like we've passed it on. I think that's the beautiful thing about it. I think that the next generation of cast just um, like extraordinary and I think it'll be really interesting you know in in a year's time I think people that opinion will be very different I think everyone will be kind of like uh, who were the people who played <laughs> no no who were they <laughs> The Girl in the Spider's Web is in theaters now, and our thanks to Agern Restaurant in Grand Central Station right here in New York for hosting our conversation. To hear Claire talk about the reaction of the real-life royals to the crown, check out our web extras at today.com slash Sunday. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit-Down Podcast to hear the entire unedited interview with Claire Foy. <laughs>